Welcome to the Andrew Colette Show. I've been playing Pokemon Sword and Shield with all different kinds of types, but can Leon, the Galar Champion, beat a hardcore Nuzlocke at his own game? It's going to be a total of 8 encounters since I can only choose one of the starters. Leon arguably has one of the best champion teams in all of the Pokemon games, unlike a certain Dragon type champion, am I right? Here are the Leon Hardcore Nuzlocke rules. When a Pokemon faints, it's dead. I can only catch the first Leon Pokemon encounter from each router area. No items in battle but held items are okay, set to battle mode, no leveling past the next gym leader's ace Pokemon until the start of that battle, and only Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard are allowed to Dynamax since that is the only Pokemon Leon would Dynamax. So the first big question is, what starter would Leon choose? I found the answer in the first episode of Pokemon Evolutions. As you can see, the player character has Inteleon. This means Hop would have Cinderace and Leon would have Rillaboom. So Grookey it is. And since I am the champion in the making, the name theme will be past champions with Grookey being named Blue because that totally makes sense. I head over to the professors to receive a Pokedex. Who is that? Is that an imposter of me? And you don't know your way around town? Kinda sus if you ask me. Anyways, I received my Pokedex from <gasps> Humana 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 Sonia, my childhood friend. But it looks like she's been brainwashed thinking that's the real Leon. I'll have to prove that I'm the one, the only, true Leon. Now having a Pokedex gives me access to Pokemon Home which I can use to transfer a Charmander from another save files post game. Then I boot up the PC at the Pokemon Center to retrieve it from the box. I then ask Jack in the Pokemon Center to change Charmander. Charmander's name to Lance. My brother Hop and I decide to have a battle with our new Pokemon. Lance easily embers Wulu three times burning his wool. My brother Hop knows what he's doing, sending out Sobble next. But I also know what I'm doing switching in blue. We use our signature moves, Facebook branch poke to knock out the Sobble. Rookie D is Hop's last mon, so Lance is brought back to burn his feathers to a crisp with embers. Fake Leon continues being suspicious, not wanting to endorse us for the gym challenge. But thankfully our battle, along with Granny McNanny being persuasive, he's cornered into handing over the letters. So out with it, Leon. How many did you catch? Not one? What were you doing this whole time? Dude, I obviously just beat the crap out of you, so chill. Maybe you're the one who needs it. After taking the train and skimming past the wild area, I entered the Motostoke Boutique to dress up in Leon's clothes. Unfortunately, I don't get access to them. I don't know if it's because I erased some save data or started a new profile, but since it's past August 31st of 2020, this is the best I can get. Fine. I'll do it myself. So we colored the hair purple, but after it dried up, the purple is gone for whatever reason. Sorry about that. Come on, that deserves a like and subscribe. I'm Hop. I'm Leon's little brother. In fact, and the next champion. Get me all signed up, would you? Well, well, yes, I'm trying to. If you'll just give me a moment. Geez, since when did my little brother become such a Karen? Looks like I ought to smack some sense into him. So I go back to the wild area at Westlake Axwell to catch myself a Timpole naming her Wallace. Then I slap my little brother Hop around with the literal exact same strategy I used from our previous battle. Don't get so upset, bro. Just stop asking to see the manager. After fighting some trainers on Route 3, Lance evolves into a Charmeleon. In the Galar mine, I run across B who asks if I was endorsed by the champion. Dude, I'm the real Leon. He's got you fooled too? Beat isn't buying it, so he challenges me to a battle. I have Lance sword dance the first turn while Solosis endeavors, bringing me down to his HP. I tell Lance to open wide and start chomping his psychic types with crunches. One hit KOing the Green Goo, Gothita, and Hatina. This frustrates Bead. He can't believe he was deceived by an imposter Leon. We finally get to the first gym leader. Excuse me, Milo. That's a little unfair sneaking up behind me. This ain't some old school RPG. But all right, you you want to play a little unfair? Lance, take out that Gossip Flower with just one Fire Fang. Now Dynamax and Max Flare that Eldegoss. They do survive, but react with a pathetic Max Overgrowth. Not even phasing out my Fire Dragon Boy. Lance incinerates every hair Eldegoss has left, winning us the first gym badge with no sweat. Now I know what some of you sweat over. That's right, shaving your balls. Take it away, Leon. Oh, hey there. Have you ever nicked yourself down there? Come on, be honest. It sucks and hurts a lot. That's why I'm proud to partner with Manscaped as this video sponsor. Let me show you some of the things the Galar Champion uses himself. First, we got the Lawn Mower 4.0 with Skin Safe Technology. That way, you can shave both your balls and your butt without cutting yourself. Plus, it's waterproof so you can shave in the shower. My balls and wife thank me every time. 
are drying off, I use the ball deodorant so it doesn't get sweaty and stinky down there. And finally, the ball toner. If you need to freshen up down there after a rough day, this will do the trick. The perfect package includes all of what I use along with a travel bag and boxer briefs. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off along with free international shipping. Plus two free gifts when you use code ANDREWSHOW at checkout. I didn't mention it earlier, but Blue did evolve into a Thwacky before the first gym leader match. And that's the only thing different about our next brother battle with Hop. Some of the Pokemon are evolved. Other than that, it's a rehash of what we did before. Our sincerest apologies. The chairman is quite busy at the moment. Uh, you sure about that, Oleana? Nessa, the gym leader of Holberry, is our next opponent. My lead is Blue, who's not threatened at all by Goldian's horn attacks. Therefore, Blue can Swords Dance twice to triple his attack power, Facebook branch poking Goldine and Aerokuda. You may be wondering why I'm not using Razor. Leaf. Well, it's a 95% accurate move, meaning it could miss against Dreadnought, and I'm not allowed to Dynamax Blue. If I missed, they could Max Strike to lower Blue speed, then KO him the next turn. That's why Branch Poke is safer, winning us the second gym badge. Oh look, Hop's gonna give us a tip on how to beat Kabu. Hop tells us he's in Galar Mine 2. How is that a tip to beating Kabu? Whatever, I forgive him. Then we run into Team Yell. My little brother gets cocky and says, can't you see that I'm Hop, the trainer who will be your next champion? But then Grunt B, of all people, is quick on their feet and replies, oh, so we've got Joker here, eh? You're so funny, I forgot to laugh. <laughs> Okay, it was a good comeback, but I can't just stand there and let them burn my little bro like that. So a double battle with Team Yell it is. I have Blue start Razor Leafing to cut down their HP, and Hop is just doing this? So yeah, Blue does all the work, taking out Lanoon and Thiebel, but I can't save Lulu in time from the Pancham Low Sweeping. Maybe try Humping next time, bro. But that's not the end of Team Yell, because at the Voodoo Inn, their celebrity Marnie challenges me next. I continue to play it safe with Lance Swords Dancing while Krogunk hits us with a Revenge. Then I Dragon Dance to outspeed that pesky Morpeko later. With plus three attack, it's time to body slam, squashing the crow gunk. Scraggy is bulkier, so I have Lance go for an outrage at this time to secure the KO. Her ace more Peko is last, but can't live an outrage either, successfully blasting Team Yell off again for a while. Since Blue and Lance are getting close to the level cap, I evolve Wallace into a Palpitoad so she can solo the gym challenge before the big fight. All I gotta do is knock out five fire types in the gym to proceed. However, during this Sizzlipede encounter, the other trainer, Salandit, fakes me out so I flinch. Then they start constantly sand attacking me, so my scalds miss the sizzlipede. The little insect is able to bug bite me in the process. Luckily, I did have Wallace holding leftovers, recovering 1 16th of HP at the end of each turn, but the sizzlipede gets me down to 10 HP. I need to land the next scald. It misses. Oh, thank goodness. They bug bite Salanda instead and KO'd it. Thankfully, my next attempt at scalding is a one-hit KO. That would have been a wipeout since Wallace was my only party member. But of course, after completing the challenge, I add Blue and Lance back to the team, then face Kabu. Wallace gets to lead the charge staring down the Ninetales while it burns with Will-O-Wisp. Wallace doesn't care. All she's here for is to place the Stealth Rocks, then pieces out for Lance to bring in the fire. All Ninetales can do is quick attack, but Lance just laughs in her face while eating leftovers at the end of each turn. Dragon dancing once and swords dancing twice, Ninetales now goes bye-bye from a body slam. Arcanine hopes to weaken our attack power with its Intimidate ability, but thanks to our earlier dances and Lance being allowed to Dynamax, Arcanine is tossed aside with a max strike. Kabu's Ace Senta Scorch couldn't be overcome by power alone. Wallace's Stealth Rocks are four times super effective against the Fire Bug typing, dropping the Centipede's health to 50%. This is what enables Lance to obliterate Centiscorch with a single max strike. Winning the third gym badge unlocks the snowstorm weather in the wild area, which means I can go back to Rolling Hills and catch a Mime Jr. naming him Diantha. Over at Hammerlock Hills, Hone Edge is found and caught as well, given the name of Steven Stone. Then I pace back to the center of the wild area, Motostoke Riverbank, catching a Rhyhorn named Alder. With a full party of six, I level up Diantha to evolve into a Galarian Mr. Mime. Alder the Rhyhorn has the best defense of anyone on the team, so she makes a perfect counter to Team Yell's physical attackers and shuts them down with Earthquakes. As I travel through the grass on Route 6, our penultimate encounter Akshu is discovered and named after Iris. A few more battles on Route 6 later help Steven evolve into a Doughblade. And he's not a Doughblade for long, because right as I enter Stoneside, there's a Dusk Stone right behind the Pokemon Center, evolving Steven into the final form of Aegislash. My little brother wants to fight again to see each other's new Pokemon we've added to our teams. Diantha sees the water flying bird and says sayonara with Thunderbolt since we won't see it again until the post game. Drizzile isn't difficult either but they do survive the first Thunderbolt and weaken our power with tearful look. A super potion and another two Thunderbolts later cause Drizzile to faint. 
Silly Cobra goes down to an Ice Beam and Toxel falls to a Psychic. To be blunt, little bro, you shouldn't have boxed Wulu and Corvus Squire for that match. Since the level cap jumped to 36, I prepare my team for Bay by evolving Wallace into a Seismitoad, Blue into Rillaboom, and Lance into Charizard. Since Lance has now earned his wings, base fighting types are no match, especially him on top. I Swords Dance and the Skating in Place Boy can't even hit back with a counter. So I have Lance fly up and BOOM! Knock out that him on top. And this just isn't any Charizard, it's a Gigantamax Charizard. Lance is also naturally a fast mon, making quick work of Pangoro and Surfetch. Oh, they use Detect. Well, never mind. It takes two hits to get rid of Surfetch, which means normal sized Charizard has to face Gigantamax Machamp. But who am I kidding? Charizard isn't afraid. I used G Max Wildfire on Surfetch earlier, burning 1 12th of Machamp's Dynamax HP, while Lance is in the air and is then smacked down by a fly. GG, Bay. Give me that fourth gym badge. What the heck are you doing, Bead? Were you just about to vandalize this precious mural? Well, let me just stop you now. Go, Diantha. Duosion could slow things down, setting up Light Screen and aiming at my weak defensive stat with Psy Shock. But after a few nasty plots, Diantha blows away the competition with Shadow Balls. I saved the mural. Take him away, boys. Ah, uh, oh no, looks like the mural still broke down. But according to Sonya, it actually revealed some clues for her research about the ancient warriors. Maybe I should go back and tell Chairman Rose to release Speed from jail. Nah. From there, it's a straight shot to the Bal and Leah gym fight. I literally don't know what to say about this battle. Steven is just so OP with its typing against the fairies. And not to mention all the free boosts Opal just gives me. With Aegislash, that was a steal. After earning the 5th gym badge, Iris evolves into Fracture. Hop is like that little brother where you're about to go to the bowling alley for a birthday party, but then your brother begs your mom to take him with you, and it's so embarrassing. Just like Hop has to show up in this video every 30 seconds, but at least he's no longer a brain dead sweep. First, Lance heats things up with Flamethrower. Blue Skinny Lizard comes in next, so I send out my own blue to counter with Drum Beating. Then, um, wait a minute, who's that Pokemon again? Ah. He at more. Nothing special. Wallace tags into Earthquake it. Second last is Snorlax, so obviously Steven's ghost typing is best here. It takes a few Iron Heads since Snorlax, the fat so, is only using Stockpile, but he faints eventually. And last is Bolton, so I swapped back in Wallace. Uh, never mind. A Puppy Roar drags out Blue. They crunch me, I drum beating, and win. Only two more battles with the little bro, everyone. And he mentioned he lost against Gordy, the rock-type gin leader. How? You have a Cramorant, Inteleon, and Trevenant. I would never... Never make a mistake like that. <gasps> oh, shoot. Oh, man. Ah, I was actually going to use Wallace against Gordy. I got to train her replacement. Alder, who evolves into a Rhydon. Then I go back to Stone side, preparing to reset days over and over until... What? No way. I got the protector item on my first try. Nice. Alder goes away for a bit and is traded back as Rhyperior. Shortly after, Diantha also evolves, becoming a Mr. Rhyme. We're now ready for Gordy. Go Blue. Clearly, Blue wins the matchup with Drum Beating, being four times super effective against Barbara Cole. As you all know, you don't bump Knuckles with a Shuckle, so our Wallace replacement Alder is summoned. Shuckle likes to Rock Tomb, lowering our speed, which is fine since we not only resist, but also keep going back to full health with leftovers. Alder armors up with three iron defenses to prepare for future threats. After that, a Stone Edge and Earthquake get rid of the Shuckle. Stone Journer does not attack, rather it used Wonder Room to bizarrely swap our base defense and special defense. And our special defense sucks. One Earthquake decimates Stone Journer. Alder handles the G-Max Vocalith from the Gigantamax just fine, because just one what did you expect from a rock move slamming into a Rhyperior? Colossal is four times weak to Earthquake, so it doesn't even last a whole turn. The six gym badge is ours. Later at the local restaurant, I try to woo Sonya when she asks about the Galar Legend Tapestry. I insist that poster is absolutely fantastic. I thought she'd laugh, but instead gets upset that I'm confusing her. Come on, Leon, you're better than that with the ladies. Then my little brother has a great idea. He says to beat the crap out of him in a Pokemon battle to impress Sonya after that embarrassing moment. Let's do it. Hop is such a nice younger brother. He purposely leads with double who can't even touch my ghost type steven so i just swords dance three times to sacred sword the double slice up the snorlax shadow sneak the inteleon chop up the pincurchin and karate chop that corbinite thanks bruh on route nine these team yell punks are blocking the way so alder flexes on their dark types with hammer arm alder stays at the front of the party while grapple locked appears stopping our water trek we're unable to run but it's no biggie since their reversal doesn't do much but i fail to run again and then grapple lock does the worst thing to alder octolock now alder cannot run or switch out and her defense drops at 
the end of each turn. I have no choice but to fight back. After one earthquake, I need just one more turn. No! Oh no! Oh! What? Oh, sad day. Alder's dead. Definitely a bummer. But we still got a great team, and I do get one more encounter, but it's not until way later. Anyways, this is the easy Marnie fight where you can just set up for free since Lyapard's only attacking move is Sucker Punch. I actually burned 2,000 calories in this fight because I accidentally left a huge lasagna in the oven for too long during the whole sequence. Will you ever forgive me? If you look on the bright side of Alder's death, we won't body press once this whole Nuzlocke, so we'll get a more interesting battle. Blue is sent in first, but that's just so it can take in the Intimidate from the Scrafty for Iris. Iris is the star of this battle, holding the Eviolite item, which gives an unevolved Pokemon plus 50% in both defenses, so the Brick Break was meh. And now Iris can one-shot the Scrafty with Superpower. Is we Superpower here? <clears throat> okay. Run. You got this. It doesn't kill? Wait, I thought it killed! What did I do wrong? What did I calc wrong? Sand attack. So what did I do wrong? Well, I forgot to check Iris's ability, which is Rivalry. You see, Rivalry gives you 25% more attack if you're the same gender as your opponent. However, if you're the opposite gender, it does 25% less damage, resulting in Scrafty's survival. So now this isn't the cakewalk I planned it to be. I need Iris alive, so Lance tags in and is sand attacked, causing him to miss the flamethrower and be hit by a payback. The next flamethrower hits, and now Malamar is here. Iris comes back in and is smacked by a heavy foul play. Iris is female, Malamar Lamar is a male. How will this go? Oh, dang it. Okay. I think that's death. Oh, Iris! Oh! Oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I can't. Why do you have this stupid rivalry? I can't believe Iris did it. What a freaking girl boss she is. You can now rest, my lady. Blue takes in the throat chop in her place. I predict the obstagoon to obstruct, which it does. So Blue is able to sword dance for free. I protect the next turn to block the throat chop. I have to sword dance again because obstagoon could live a low roll and counter back even harder. After being hit by another throat chop, Blue eats his citrus berry. Brick break Oko's the obstagoon taking down Pierce's last main threat to us. Pierce still has Skuntank, but it's nothing Steven can't handle. Skuntank's only physical dark move is sucker punch. He does have Snarl and his screeches go through my king shield. But after stalling all five of his sucker punches, Steven easily tanks the Snarl and hits back harder with Iron Head, winning us the seventh gym badge. Booyah! Things got tough for Iris, but no one died. After that exciting battle, I read the Galar Bugle, and it has fake news. Imposter Leon photoshopped that whole thing. Pokemon can only Dynamax where there are power spots. And since when does a Galar Bridge have one? I have to act quick before this sus guy hoodwinks all of Galar. Now, I spent a long time scheming up a plan to best Ryan with no casualties, but Lance is my only fast Pokemon, and his Flygon is even faster, so I knew what I had to do. Speed Eevee training. I go back to Route 1 and slay Rookadees until Lance was faster than Flygon, and Blue was faster than Duraludon. We're now ready for Raihan, and our starter squad leads the duel. Since Lance is allowed to Gigantamax, he does so right away, and wipes out Flygon with Max Wormwind. Blue uses Drum Beating on Gigalith, and I could have given Blue a Miracle Seed and Attack Eevees to ensure the KO, but I didn't want Duraludon out the next turn. I was planning on Lance taking a huge hit from Gigalith's Rock Blast, but instead he dodges it. The second turn, Lance finishes off the rock with a max overgrowth, and Blue claps that Sandaconda with drum beating. Duraludon Gigantamaxes Ryan's final turn, but remember, we are both faster. Lance uses G-Max Wildfire, and Blue uses Superpower, sealing the deal along with the last gym badge. It's amazing what some speed training can do to make a tougher battle not tough at all. This is where the level cap gets difficult to manage. Marnie and Hop's ace Pokemon are level 59, just one level above Ryan's level cap. Lance already reached level 50, so he has to be boxed. And now I'm going to go through this rotation to keep everyone under level during Route 10. First, it's just Diantha and Iris. Side note, Iris got to evolve into a Haxorus after that battle. Then we add Blue to the mix for this hiker battle. For this gentleman, I only have Steven and Iris. And finally, I have Iris solo in this double battle, so I can just skip it. Hacks! The Champions Cup semifinals are initiated with Marnie first. Steven blazed through her last time, so why not this time too? Her life part is faster and going in right away with the snarls. I swords dance once and am now below 50% 
from two snarls. So I need to start firing back with Iron Heads, plowing through both Lipart and her Scrafty. Toxic Rook Sucker Punch is the only damaging move it has for Steven since fighting and poison don't affect us. She does try to mess us up with Swagger, but we're fine overall thanks to leftover ceiling. And after all five of her Sucker Punches, we're safe to strike with Iron Heads again, crushing Toxic Rook, Morpeko, and the Dynamax Grim Snarl. The next and last semi-final contender is... Hey, stop copying my prep techniques, little brother. And this match is even easier than the Marnie fight because the double's only attack that can hurt us is Zen Butt. So I Swords Dance three times to quadruple my attack power and Autotomize once to double my speed to zoom through double with Iron Head. Crucify Snorlax with Iron Head, Clop and Kerchin from the shadows, and I continue to Shadow Claw Corviknight and Inteleon with just one pop each. I'm sorry I trashed you so hard, Hop, but did you really think you stood a chance against your elder brother? By the way, what kind of training do these bodyguards even have? It only took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven average citizens to scare them all away. For real? I chase after Oleana to inform her that Rose is with the wrong Leon. You do? Come on, I'll tell you on the way. No, no, guys. You've got the wrong buzz. You've got the wrong buzz. She doesn't listen, gets tired of my babbling, and just straight up starts a fight with a kid. I came prepared. Lance is holding a choice scarf, locking into one move, but we are 50% faster, outspeeding the frost last and incinerated with flamethrower. My Lodic is a sign for Lance to check out, having blue take its place, knocking out my Lodic with two drum beatings. Same thing goes for Salazzle. Lance covers for blue this time, and is Vino shocked in his place. Once again, choice scarf comes into play here, because without it, Salazzle would be the faster one. Earthquake makes the fire poison lizard go extinct. Since I am locked into Earthquake, Quake, I switch out for Steven after Serena takes stage. She does use a tract on Steven, causing him to fail about every other turn because he's immobilized by his love for her. Thankfully, her acrobatics, along with leftovers healing, nullifies her as a threat. So after many turns, three sword dances along with an autonomize eventually comes to pass. Steven taps into his crazy side, psycho cutting the plant he loves, diminishing the love sickness he was inflicted with. This enables him to freely psycho cut Gigantamax Garbodor since the attraction is gone. Rose, come on, man, listen to me. This Leon is a fraud. That's why he won't help you. Why isn't anyone listening to me? Whatever. I'll just enter the Champions Cup Finals. Fake Leon is supposedly in control here, but when Beat interrupts this massive event, Fake Leon does nothing about it, proving my case even more that he's a fraud. I guess that I, the real Leon, must stop Beat. While in shield form, Steven holds against Mawile's two crunches. After two swords dances and autotomize, you all know the rest of the story. Iron had all of his fairy Pokemon. Been there, done that. Sonya might be disappointed, but I'm going to wash your team away. Wait, who told you I like Sonya? Freaking Hop can never keep a secret. We haven't seen Diantha in the limelight for a while, so let's see him shine. He protects the first turn to block Elisapod's first impression, then returns the favor with Freeze Dry, activating his emergency exit ability, introducing us to Sea King. Now, Diantha lacks two things, physical defense and speed. Thus, while Sea King Aqua Rings, Diantha Iron Defenses. Sea King then proceeds to use Mega Horn, and I really gotta hope for no critical hits, while putting up two more Iron Defenses. Lefties also helps out, of course. I finally switch Diantha to Attack Mode with Freeze Dry, an ice move that is super effective against water types, but it's not enough to one shot, meaning we have to risk more Mega Horn crits. Nessa used her full restore, but two more freeze dries from us. Fillet that fish. Galissapod is back, and it's standard to protect the first impression, then finish things with freeze dry. Barrascuta also fails to land a critical hit, and its frail fish body dies from freeze dry. Pelipper is even more screwed, being four times weak to it. I did teach Diantha Energy Ball just for Nessa's Dreadnought, and it's not enough? Who cares? We live the max darkness. Diantha successfully sold the Nessa round. Ah, bay. The fight with no substance because your Halucha can't do anything except bounce, which I can just protect. The real question is, can my editor fit this whole battle in before the end of Steven's favorite joke? What's the difference between Iron Man and Aluminum Man? Iron Man stops the bad guy and Aluminum Man foils their plans. Okay, so now it's time for us dragon phonies to fight it out. And what I mean by that is I'm using Lance, the wannabe dragon Charizard, and Ryan claims to be a dragon trainer. Well, actually, now that I think about it, he does use four dragons here, but starts off with 
with Torkoal. The Torkoal can't hurt us too badly, so I'm guessing he's gonna yawn. I Swords Dance, and there's the yawn. I Swords Dance again, and he Lava Plumes. End of turn, Lance falls asleep, but this is why I had him hold a Lumberry, which wakes him up. With a buff Charizard that just woke up from a nap, Lance Earthquakes Torkoal down to the center of the earth. Derpy Gudra would have a chance versus a typical special attacking Charizard, but mine is physical, baby. Dragon Claw. With only three Pokemon left on Raihan's team, I decided to Gigantamax Lance into his sick form to Max Quake the Turtonator. Lance is still faster than Flygon from the Speed Eevee training we did from earlier, so Max Wormwind is all it takes. And Lance finishes off the Skyscraper with a Max Quake. Ryan seemed a little off to me, so I asked, and he opened up saying he was still bummed Facebook and Instagram were all day on October 5th. Uh, okay, dude. Back in the locker room, Hop informs me that the fake Leon's name is Lee. Finally, he believes I'm the real Leon, until Leon is like, what? Before the final match of the run, I headed back to the slumbering well to help out Sonya. And my mom looks way too excited for me to be stopping Darkest Day. Is she hoping I die? Well, if that's the case, I better go find some help from the dead. I head to the Lake of Outrage to find your cloak. And boy, did this guy take a lot of convincing to join us. I was getting nervous it'd kill itself with takedown and recoil. Eventually, I am successful in catching it and name him Cynthia because they're both ballers. After that rough encounter, I feed Cynthia some candy, evolving him into a Dragapult. Hey, Chairman Rose, I know what will impress everyone. I'll start fire charizard started the fire hey that's my song says who you really want to do this right now oh it is on thank you very much for explaining it all to us comment below if you know what chandelure is talking about where the heck were we in the story rose lost Good enough for me. Hop and I head upstairs where Imposter Leon fails to calm down and catch Eternatus in a basic Pokeball. This is no longer about saving the world. It's about doing it better than him and rubbing it in his face. Since he hasn't been highlighted at all in this run yet, I have Cynthia be the knight in shining armor versus Eternatus. His spectacular speed fires off the Dragon Darts first. Then he resists the cross poison. One more Dragon Dart tilts Eternatus so hard that it flies up in the air like a rocket before blowing up into its Eternamax form. It gets even better. When the legendary dog goes arrive in the ta-da nick of time. The synergy they have with Cynthia is amazing. Zacian starts off with Hal, increasing everyone's attack stat, making our dragon darts even more powerful. Eternatus tries to weaken our attack back to normal with Max Wormwind, but Cynthia's clear body ability prevents stat reduction. This fight really could not have gone any better. And alas, time to shove it in fake Leon's face. I use a simple, plain, ordinary Pokeball and catch Eternatus. You all know what that means. I finally get my chance to prove that I am the real Leon. Once and for all in the champion battle. Cynthia still hasn't had enough time in the spotlight, so I lead him versus fake Leon's Aegislash. Cynthia could die to just one Shadow Ball from Aegislash, by Risk It, which pays off since they use King Shield. I Dragon Dance because of my hindering speed nature, that way I can outspeed his own Dragapult. Also, with one stage attack boost, Cynthia's Phantom Force cannot be blocked and KOs the Aegislash. Cynthia then goes on a Rampage, Missile Striking Haxorus to zero HP with Dragon Darts. He continues to shoot them at their Dragapult. Pew pew, pew pew! Now his Seismitoad is a bulky toad and survives the Dragon Dart Mayhem, but ends up missing the Toxic, now having to live with that regret for the rest of her life. Imposter Leon tries to save Seismitoad with full restore, but they can't keep up with my pew 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 pews. Now I could kill Cinderace here, but I have to end this the right way. I have Cynthia, Phantom Force rather than Dragon Dart, because it leaves Cinderace at a sliver of health. Cinderace attacks with acrobatics, but whatever. Cynthia then U-turns, not only KOing the rabbit, but pivoting in Lance. That way, it's a fair one-on-one -on -one face down between the Charizards. We both begin by Gigantamaxing our Charizards. Now his Charizard is faster because it has the timid nature, increasing their speed. I was ready though and had Lance hold a Charty Berry, which cuts in half the damage received from a super effective rock attack. Like the four times super effective max rockfall we just used. I have Lance max airstream back at them, which increases our speed, now giving us the opportunity to move first next turn. And that's gonna be the end of the battle since I have my own max rockfall, ending fake Leon's career and exposing him to all of Galar. We are the champions, my friends. He then explains to Galar the misunderstanding and crowns me in my proper place. Leon, the true champion of Galar. That was a pretty fun Nuzlocke. I literally dressed like Leon just to get the full experience too. Even though my encounters were limited, Leon's options were honestly just incredible. Let me know in the comments of any other fun Nuzlocke ideas you can come up with. Maybe I'll do one. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like the video and subscribe. It would really mean the world to me and it really does help the channel. You all have a good one. Thanks. Let's at least see what it looked like with the wig on. It's probably hideous, huh? <laughs>